Hi, right, welcome back to the studio. I've got a little tiny short video here to talk about the use of uh, grids and grid structures in order to scale up complex uh, imagery from a photograph. So um, with, with this uh, kind of a project, what, what you want to do is um, get a good photograph of your subject matter. Uh, a great drawing done from a crappy photograph is still going to give you a crappy drawing. So what you need to do first and foremost is spend some time um, either in this case setting up a, a high quality still life or you know um, a landscape or wh whatever your subject matter is you need to get a good photograph of that subject matter and then a good printout of that photograph. So um, in this little example here, this is from a still life I set up at the art studio at the university, um, and uh, it's well lit. It's got some light and shadow and some dynamic um, foreshortening and, and point of view and all of that. Um, and uh, it's printed on a, you know, moderately high quality printer, so I get a good representation of that photograph. And just to give you an example of a crappy photograph, uh, uh, the same photograph printed from a crappy computer uh, or a crappy printer, you can see the difference in in tonal quality there. And it's I can still get a decent drawing from that, but I'm going to have to invent a lot of what's going on there um, <clears throat> from that drawing. So get a good photograph of your, of your subject matter that you're interested in, um, get a good print out of that photograph, and then you can begin to approach the utilization of a grid and a grid um, made, I think, famous really by the artist Chuck Close. If you want to see some uh, amazing creative work done with a grid, look at Chuck Close's work. Others have used it too. Um, Albrecht Dürer, actually in the uh, 15th century, I think, back way back in the day. Anyway, there's uh, there's an engraving of uh, by him of an artist using a grid of obviously not from a photograph, but a grid set up in order to assist with the foreshortening of a figure. Anyway, so this kind of thinking has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now we use it from a photograph. And what you do is, it takes a little bit of art math. So um, with this uh, printout here, I printed this out um, so that this is six inches by eight inches. So I manipulated um, the photo uh, printout. So because I'm going to tr scale this up to 18 by 24, so if I divide this grid, and I'm going to make a simple grid here into thirds, and thirds here, so I have the rule of thirds going on, blah, blah, blah. I've got two, two, and two, and uh, what, what is this? Two and five, eight-ish down here. Anyway, when I divide this into thirds, this is um, six times three is 18, eight times three is 24. So anyway, my, my, when I grid this out into the rule of thirds, I can easily do my art math um, and uh, successfully scale this up. What this really helps in doing is uh, to break a complex situation down into manageable bite-sized pieces. So this is a, um, a, a complex set of arrangements here. There's a lot going on. Um, and to efficiently, if I want to be representational and realistic about what I'm drawing, I could approach it just by hand um, without this, and then I'm gonna have to make a lot of corrections. This way, I'm breaking each piece down into smaller pieces, and it gets me there quicker. Some artists, um, we'll use a loose grid. I call this a loose grid pattern. There's oh, nine areas. And I'm basically, uh, when I drew that in, and you can see a lot of my uh, lightly drawn underdrawing there. Um, when I drew that in, um, I was, you know, pretty accurate, but relatively a little bit gestural with it. Um, some artists will get in there and um, break each of these grids down into smaller grids, right, where it's needed. So, and I did that here actually with this, this dog's face. I broke this quadrant down into a smaller grid so that I could tell how to situate this little puppy dog's head 
in there. And I did that here too. Uh, so where I have more detail, I'm going to break that down a little bit more so that I can quickly, accurately get those in there. For me, the uh, emphasis on this is going to be in the quality of the light and uh, shadow and the dynamics and mystery that's created with all of these edges, uh, finishing this out in charcoal. Um, so that's what's important. And <clears throat> uh, speaking of that, um, as you're drawing this out, the structure of light is the same as what we've studied before. You, from your highlights, light tones, mid tones, core shadows in this little dog's ear here, there's some core shadows and reflected lights. All of that's happening. Um, I'm just recognizing it off of a, a photograph instead of uh, from, from life. I'm utilizing the same techniques of pushing the charcoal in with a brush, you know, laying it in, brushing it in, softening it up, and um, erasing back out my lights and my edges. Um, and establishing the lights later on with pencil. And so I've got the structure of light that's the same, and I have hard, soft, and lost edges. And if I get all of those to work representing this, I can mess with it a little bit and uh, put some artistic flair in there for uh, hopefully I come out with a high quality finished drawing. One last thing, um, some artists are gonna be like Chuck Close, uh, have a high fidelity of um, uh, of uh, attachment to what's happening in the photograph. And they're going to draw everything. So in this case, somebody like that might draw in this actual light source that's back here. There's an actual light. I'm not going to do that. And I want to just give everybody the freedom to interpret a little bit. So in the background back here, I might put a gradient in, or I might get inventive and put a night sky in, or I might get inventive and put, put as imagine this whole thing happening in a fish tank and have some goldfish swimming back there or something. Anyway, uh, the photograph for me is a point of departure and not an end in itself creatively. So it's that simple. I've got a very rudimentary start here. Obviously I've got to a lot of work to do. Um, one of the things that is going to be helpful in getting this to the point where I, I think it's going to be a, a finished drawing is that as I'm drawing in here with the charcoal, I'm, I'm using a lot of vine and willow charcoal, I'm going to need to spray fix it, get this to a point where it's at its first stage, I'll spray fix it, um, and then build those darks into the dark. So it's, it's difficult to uh, create some rich, dynamic, deep, velvety black darks um, without spray fixing in layers. So technically that's a little bit of a hint um, moving forward. So um, build your still life uh, or um, perhaps you, you find a landscape um, or maybe, well, leave it at that, and get a good photograph of it, get a good printout of the photograph of it, scale it up, and uh, execute the drawing using charcoal. And that's about it. Um, it's a relaxing, fun uh, process. I think you'll find out a lot about vision and um, light and shadow dynamics by using this. And uh, have a great time, and I'll see you in a week or so.